Hello my YouTube friends! Prism Live Studio has so many awesome features that you just can't get in OBS. Like green screen without a green screen built right in, drawing on the screen, and the expanded text tools are just a few of the highlights, but there are so many more. But the biggest complaint has always been that OBS plugins won't work. So you can't use the move transition and the downstream keyer. Well, not anymore. OBS plugins will now work in Prism Live Studio and they are really easy to install. I'm gonna show you how to do it today so you know what, let's get to it! Both these plugins I'm gonna show you today add some extra flair and make your stream easier. The purpose is to make your stream more engaging to make it easier to build a connection with your audience. Now the benefits of developing a connection with your audience cannot be understated. It should be the main focus of any live stream. Now there are links to Prism Live Studio and both the plugins that I'm going to show you today right down in the description so you can download them and follow along. That is the best way to learn. So let's get everything installed. So here we are on the main Prism page and I had a couple of people ask, so I just want to show you this. It used to be that the Prism Live Studio was here and you can see there's Windows and the Mac OS has finally been released. But there also used to be a Prism lens over here and now it's missing and people have been asking, has it been removed, what's wrong? Well, if you just go up here to products, you could see that Prism Lens is right here. You could just go to the desktop app and it will bring you over here. And you've got the Mac one is coming soon and the Windows one right here. So just in case you felt like you're missing the Prism Lens, if you go up to products, you can find it. But we're gonna go ahead to the desktop app and you're gonna download whichever one you want. In my case, it would be Windows and you just click the download button and it's gonna go ahead and download. And then you just go into your downloads. You can see it right there. You just double click on it. You're gonna get an administrative prompt, uh, which you can't see, but we'll click yes. And it brings it up and you just wanna click install and run through the process. If you've never used Prism before, you may need to go ahead and log in to your Google account to set it up, that sort of stuff, really simple. Um, if you have Prism already installed, when you bring it up, it's going to tell you to update and that is going to give you access to using the plugins. So let me go ahead and show you how to install these plugins. So the first thing you're going to want to do is know exactly where your Prism Live Studio is installed. So we can go to our shortcut here for Prism Live Studio. And we've got Prism Lens on here as well. We can right click. And we can just go to the open file location and boom, we can see where all this stuff is. So we've got Prism Live Studio, Data, Ops, OBS plugins, all this kind of stuff is right here. So now we know where our Prism install is going to be. All we have to do is go ahead and add some plugins. So today I'm going to show you how to add two plugins, my two favorites, the downstream keyer and the move transition. So to get to the plugins is pretty simple. Just in case you don't want to click the link down below, you can just click the plus here. All you have to do is type OBS plugins in your browser and it'll bring it right here. It's going to be the top one. It's OBS projects, forum plugins, and boom, there we go. So now we are already in. And of course, now this means we're going to be able to install NDI and all kinds of other really cool plugins. But we're going to start with the ones that I think are cool. We're going to go with the downstream keyer first here. And all we have to do is click the download button. And it's going to bring this up. Now normally if we were doing this for Windows OBS, we would use the installer. It's really the easiest way to go. But because Prism is not OBS and we're going to basically make this plugin work for Prism, we're going to install the zip file. So we're going to need to download that one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get the other one that we're going to do. Let's go down here and we're going to use this one right here. So I'm just going to click the plus. We're going to go to download. Now you're going to find that if it doesn't have a zip transition, if it just has the installer, it's going to make it a little more difficult to do this 
but there probably is a way. The two I'm gonna show you today have the zip file, so they're really super easy. So we're gonna go ahead and download that, and then all we have to do is go into our download folders. And so we've got our move transition and our download downstream keyer. Let's do the downstream keyer first. I'm gonna right click, and I'm just gonna go and extract all. And we're gonna extract it. And there we go, we see our folder right here. And it has these two things, data and plugins. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select both. We're gonna right click, and we're gonna go to copy. And then I already opened up our plugins area. So you can see here, Prism Live Studio. We've got our data and our plugins. So I'm just gonna go to empty space. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to paste and boom, now that plugin should be installed in those two directories. Now all we have to do is go back to our downloads and we'll right click on the move transition and we're going to extract all. And when we go into our move transition, you're gonna see the same two things, data and OBS plugins. So we're just gonna select them. We're gonna right click, we're gonna go copy. We're gonna come over here to our Prism Live Studio and you see it has data and OBS plugins once again. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna go paste. And now we have our move transition and our downstream keyer completely installed in Prism Live Studio. I told you it was easy to install the plugins in Prism Live Studio. Let me show you how they work. All that's left to do now is go ahead and open Prism Live Studio. And once it's opened, we can go up here and we can go to docs and we can see our downstream keyer doc so i'm just going to go ahead and open that one and we're going to drag it over here and place it right next to our thing and i'll show you how to use it just in case you haven't used the downstream keyer in obs expand that out a little bit and there we go and you can see it's a little truncated down here at the bottom we have add and remove right next to one another. You kind of got a mouse over them to get them to work, but they're both right here. They're just a little bit truncated. That's not gonna be a problem once we load them in there. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. We can also verify that our move transition is here by clicking here and clicking the plus. And there we see our move transition. Now there is so much that we can do on the move transition and I'm gonna show you some of the basics here. But if you wanna learn more, I'll definitely link a video at the end. And that video is gonna be for OBS because that's what I created the video for originally. However, all of the same things will work exactly the same in Prism Live Studio now that we've loaded it in. So let's make it simple. I'll first show you how to use the move transition in the easiest way. We have a scene created here. I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus and I'm going to go to a video capture device and I'm just gonna bring my camera in here. And so all we have to do is go to our camera and bada bing, there we go. And I wanna select my audio. So we're gonna use a custom audio device and I will select my Camlink Audio One. So there we go, we now have our camera. How does the move transition work? Well, let's say, let's go ahead and add a second scene. And we wanted to add another camera. We're gonna add the same camera and okay. And we're just gonna select that camera right here. And in this case, we wanna do kind of a scene. So we're gonna go and do that. And then I'm gonna go and select a background template and click OK and OK. And then I'm just gonna select a background here that I wanna use. I'm gonna move it below my video capture device. And there we go. So we have my camera and we have the background. And in this scene, we just have that. So what we can do is we're gonna just go and we're gonna click the plus and we're going to add the move transition. And we can click okay. And it brings us all kinds of options in here for our move transition. But to get the effect we're looking for, we don't really need to change any of that at all right now. We're just gonna click okay. And now when we move from one scene to the other, you're gonna see that my camera because it's the same in both scenes, we'll just kind of do that really nice transition in between. <laughs> it's really cool. And we can do this even more so 
So let's go to scene two and we're gonna right click and we're gonna copy that scene and we'll call this scene three because it has all the same assets. And what we're gonna do is we'll just move my camera up here and we'll just duplicate this again. We're gonna go copy and we'll call this scene four. And we'll click OK. And we'll just move the camera on scene four over here. And we'll do one more. Right click and copy. And we'll do scene five. And we'll just move this camera right there. We'll move it right over the moon. So now we can go to scene one. And you can see it basically zooms us right in. Go to scene two. We're down here. Scene three, it zips us up to the top corner. Scene four, right there. OBS plugin working right in here. It's awesome. So how does the downstream keyer work? Well, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna decide what assets we want over top of all of our scenes or to have the ability to go over top of all our scenes. Uh, a lot of times I like to use alerts as an example for something I want over top of all the scenes but I'm not gonna set up alerts for this video because it might be too complex. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some really simple assets that I use over top of pretty much any scene to have a little bit of fun. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a scene six and we're just gonna call this uh, DK for downstream keyer. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus and I'm gonna add a media source. Click okay and we're gonna call this uh, jokes that works and I'm gonna go ahead and browse to the location of the actual file that I'm trying to access in this case it should be here current live streaming assets and let's see if I can find the correct one right here click on that click open now I don't know if this has any audio, we'll see in a second, but we don't need to change anything else. We don't want this looped or anything like that. We click OK, and there we go. That's what we're gonna get. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down here, make sure that's selected, and then here in disk one, I'm gonna go ahead and click add. And there we go, DK, this scene is added there. So now I can go here to scene three, and I can just click the downstream key here, and it comes up. So that's how you unselect it is by clicking none. Um, we can click it and I can actually change scenes and you can see it still stays up there. So it's gonna go over your scenes, it's gonna go over your transitions, whatever you add to the downstream keyer here is gonna go in every single scene. And if you wanna learn more about how the downstream keyer works, I can link a video down in the description so you can check it out. And those videos are gonna be showing you how to do it in OBS, but the process is exactly the same. Once you put those actual plugins in Prism, they will work exactly the same. That's pretty much the final roadblock to using Prism, and they conquered it. These guys are killing it. If you wanna learn more about the move transition or the downstream keyer, you should check one of these videos out. And I just wanna say a big thanks to Prism Live Studio for sponsoring this video. I couldn't possibly do any of this without them or you, so thanks. And if you want to make a connection with me, you can join my live stream. It's every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'd love to see you there. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.